Welcome back to Who Chose. So today, we're going to talk about reducing the temperature of your hydroponic system reservoir. I'm going to go through my top 10 tips to reduce the temperature from uh, the least feasible to the easiest. How you can implement them in your hydroponic system. Let's get to it. Tip number 10, water chillers. Now, these are basically aquarium units, uh, which are refrigeration units where a pump is used to push the nutrient solution through a refrigeration unit and back into the reservoir to cool the nutrient solution. This would probably be my last ditch effort to cool my system, purely because the outlay for one of these machines is expensive and the running costs are ongoing. So uh, cooling anything uh, is an expensive process when it comes to energy. And if you don't have unlimited energy, it's gonna cost you a fair bit. So the next method of cooling that we're gonna talk about is using a cooling coil system. Now, this requires a large body of water, be it a dam or a pool or a house tank water system where you can pump water through a copper coil in your hydroponic reservoir and then back into the water source, which will remove the latent heat in the nutrient solution and return it to a larger body of water. Now, this will only work if your larger body of water is cooler than your nutrient reservoir. Method number eight is to run a fan across the top of your nutrient solution. Now, the reason I don't like this method is because it uses evaporative cooling to cool the nutrient solution. And as you evaporate the water, you actually concentrate the nutrients. So not only are the plants transpiring and concentrating nutrients, you are causing evaporation um, and you may be getting a cooler nutrient solution, but you are raising the EC of your nutrient solution as a byproduct of that cooling. To combat this, we can use number seven on my list of how to cool your reservoir and that is by topping up your reservoir. Now this is obviously a short-term solution uh, and it only works if your water supply is a decent amount cooler than the reservoir itself. It's also limited by the size of your reservoir. Method number six, painting your reservoir. Now, painting your reservoir a lighter color is meant to reflect the light hitting the reservoir and reduce the heat transferred to the nutrient solution within the reservoir. Now, the reason I don't like this solution is because you are only reducing the heat transferred into the reservoir and you're not trying to stop the heat before it has a chance to transfer into that reservoir. So painting your reservoir is not as effective as the next method. Method number five, cladding or shading your reservoir. Now, it's really hard for me to get a decent shot of my reservoir because there's so many things in the way of it. Uh, we're on the southern side right now, which doesn't get any sun at all, and I've still got full cladding, and the grow bed is shading the top and all of the plants are growing over the top. This is the point in the video where we get into the methods that I would highly recommend using. Cladding and shading the reservoir is very effective because air is a really bad transmitter of heat. So if the sun hits the side of your reservoir and you have a reflective color, most of the heat will get reflected away. Any heat that's absorbed 
which will happen, is then transmitted into the air behind the cladding. The air then has to transmit that heat through the sidewall of your reservoir and into your nutrient solution. So having all of these buffers between the radiant heat of the sun and the nutrient solution gives you some really good insulation for your nutrient reservoir. As you can see, as we come around the northern side of my hydroponic system, I've actually positioned a stand where I have all of my old video experiments growing and doubling as shading for the NFT hydroponic system reservoir. Now, it's not such a big problem now that it's winter, but in summer, this will give a decent amount of cooling for my reservoir. Method number four, increasing the size of your reservoir. Now, we dealt with this before with larger bodies of water having better capacities for resisting changes in temperature. So the specific heat of water is extremely high, which means that it takes a lot of energy to raise water one degree in temperature. So the more water you have, the harder it is to raise the temperature of that water. This means that if you increase the size of your reservoir, you increase its capacity to handle temperature swings. So by increasing the size of your reservoir, you can actually inherently decrease the likelihood you will have a really bad temperature swing on the hottest days in your summer. Method number three, burying your reservoir. This takes advantage of both shading and it also lowers the temperature of the nutrient solution to the ground temperature of the area that you live in. Now, this isn't an option for me as my reservoirs are quite large and I didn't want to get heavy equipment in to dig a hole to bury them. However, in commercial situations where you're running a large system of hydroponic networks, it can be very beneficial to do this purely because if you lower the reservoir under the ground, you're also creating a really good hydroponic ecosystem in that uh, everything runs down with gravity and back into that nutrient tank. You don't need to raise your systems to get gravity to take your nutrients back to the tank. Method number two is my favorite method for cooling down your nutrient solution reservoir. Cover cropping. Now, we've seen cover cropping on my channel before. When I first set up this system uh, to get me through the first summer that I had the system running, I actually planted pickling cucumbers uh, that would drape over the outsides of my reservoir, which had already been clad. The reason that cover cropping works so well is that transpiration on the surface of the leaves of the plants causes evaporative cooling that not only reduces the temperature of the leaves of the plants, it also reduces the ambient temperature around the leaves of the plants. Not only does it reduce the temperature of the air around the reservoir, it shades the reservoir and Rather than using those evaporative cooling techniques that we discussed earlier, this form of evaporative cooling actually increases the production of your system in general because the plants are doing the transpiring and in so transporting nutrients into the cells in their tissues and creating more plants, which is the entire point of hydroponics. And my number one piece of advice is to incorporate all of those techniques, especially the last four, into the solution 
to reducing the temperature of your nutrient solution. Now, the combination of shading, cladding, burying, and cover cropping will reduce the amount of heat that gets to and stays in your nutrient solution and will therefore allow your plants to achieve the optimal temperature in their roots. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up for the algorithm. If you haven't already, subscribe for more. Happy hydroponicking.